Now let's talk about some common areas of confusion that people run into. Uh, first of all, how can we really say a three-dimensional structure like the head is moving within a two-dimensional plane? So to understand this, you got to realize that we're really talking about an infinite uh, family of planes that all lie parallel to one another. So you've got plane on top of plane on top of plane. So when you move your head, uh, if you turn your head in a circle, every point on the head, even though the head is a three-dimensional structure, every point is just a one-dimensional point, right? So as we move that around, let's say the eye, that's going to describe a two-dimensional arc in one plane. Um, a point on the nose would describe a two-dimensional arc in another plane. Likewise for the chin, each one of these moves in its own two-dimensional space, but taken together, um, they're obviously going to make up a three-dimensional object. Now, students often ask about moving around a plane. Is it possible to, to move around a plane? And we don't want to describe it that way because when we say around something, what we're really saying is forming a loop around that thing without going through it, right? So we could imagine going around a plane like this if you draw a big circle that completely surrounds it. But the problem with this is that planes are infinite. So there isn't really any way you can do this without intersecting the plane. If you draw that plane a little larger, you're going to realize that as you try to do that, you're going to cut through the plane at some point, go around and come back the other side. So the only really useful way to talk about um, circular or arc-shaped movements and planes is to describe them as occurring within a plane rather than around it. Um, finally, so what about moving along an axis? Is it possible to move along an axis instead of around it? The answer is, well, actually, yes, we do have joints uh, called plane joints that allow us to move in this way. So, for example, you can stick your chin out, and this kind of an action is described as protraction. It's a straight line movement. It does not go around an axis. Um, but it's not a good idea to talk about moving along an axis for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that um, we don't really have any joints in the body that are shaped in such a way to constrain movement along an axis. In order to do that, you'd have to imagine some kind of a channel-shaped structure, um, you know, kind of like this, and the joint would slide one way or the other across that channel. Um, that There are no joints in the body that are designed to work that way. Um, there are times when that happens, unfortunately, but that's known as a dislocation. So that's not a good thing, and it's not a useful way to describe the movement of joints. Um, the other reason that we don't like to talk about moving along an axis is that if you were to talk about it that way, it would be difficult to decide what plane to assign that movement to. So let's imagine a movement along an axis that's horizontal. Um, what plane does that correspond to? Well, it could be this plane, or it could be a horizontal plane that still intersects with the same path. Um, so for those reasons, uh, never talk about movement along an axis. Always describe movement as around an axis. Or in the case of these straight line movements, you can you can say they are non-axial. They do not involve any axis. Okay, so in conclusion, um, the main points about axes and planes are that there are three primary planes, frontal, sagittal, and transverse. There is a corresponding primary axis that's perpendicular to each one of these. Um, the vertical plane, uh, vertical axis, the left-right axis, and the anterior-posterior axis. And when we talk about movements, we can almost always describe them as two-dimensional movements around an axis and within a plane.